Chapter 2. Blissville. Blissville? You shouldn't wander off. What's the worst that could happen? Strange. At least now your body matches your mental age. Cool! Hey! I resent the- Oh look! A clown! <laughs> Welcome to Blissville, where no one is ever sad. Never? Ow! What's wrong? Uh. Are you okay? Oh! Stop it! I didn't mean to snap at you, it's just, we don't ask questions here. But then how do you... <laughs> Murderer. <laughs> Let's eat. The food looks normal. Scramble eggs, please. Ho, ho, ho. Santa! Well, hello there. Would you like a book? It's a bit expensive, isn't it? You can't put a price on making everyday Christmas. I'll even autograph it for you. Sold! Phil acquires item, Santa's book. What have you got? You're an idiot. Why? This might help us find the key to life. Okay, let's see it. You can make everyday Christmas by remembering 10 easy tips. 1. You can never have too many toys. If you're feeling sad, buy some more. 2. A round belly is a happy belly. Remember, sweets rhymes with eats. 3. Asking questions will only suck the magic out of life. This is terrible advice. I don't know. A round belly is a happy belly. Hey, here comes our food. Chocolate scrambled eggs? Enjoy your meal. You're not actually going to eat that, are you? Sweets rhymes with eats. Okay, you're right. It's a stupid book with bad advice. Let's find Santa so I can give my money back. You're the only one for me, baby. Hi. I'm looking for Santa Claus. You should ask the mayor. He knows everything. Where can I find him? Did you hear me? You should ask the mayor. He knows everything. I think this one's broken. You're the only one for me, baby. What a jerk. Hey, we're looking for the mayor. Oh, allow me to escort you to his place. He'll be right out. Welcome to Blissville. I'm Mayor Mayor, and this is my wife, Mary Annette. Your wife? Pleased to meet you. But why don't I give you a tour of our beautiful city? So how many affairs are you having? I'm afraid you must have me confused with somebody else. Give me a break. Hey, what she doesn't know can't hurt her. You honestly... Look over here, it's our famous street mall. How do I look? Beautiful. You look terrible. And here is the local fortune teller. Phony. Hey, there's Santa. I want my money back for that book. A deal's a deal, kid. I'm pretty sure that contracts with fictional characters aren't enforceable. Fictional? You mean... I'm not real? They killed Santa! Now, now. Look! See everyone? Santa's right there. Santa's pretty tired, but don't worry, he'll be back soon. Oh yeah, Santa'll be back. I hope he brings presents. 
Look, you little brats. I welcome you into my town and you cause me trouble. You weren't even happy at the mall. Or the fortune tellers. It's not my fault that none of it was real. Wait a second. Is any of this real? Not again. What now? What do you think? I'm going to rebuild Blissville. <gasps> Let me try one. It's... it's Link. Ah, well done, my lad. Somebody help us. Are you here to rescue us? Affirmative. What about the rest of them? Okay, well, uh, let's go. This is the question Phil and Sophie just encountered. So what do you think? Well, does believing in Santa really make someone ignorant? We can be manipulated into ignorance at a young age, and it can cause us to make less informed decisions for the rest of our lives. Imagine if you never learned that Santa isn't real. I just don't see why you use Santa as an example. There are lots of good reasons for kids to believe in him. Such as, it's fun. But is lying the only or best way to make the holiday fun? What about imagination? Imagination is the ability to create something new while recognizing that it isn't real. If anything, believing other people's outlandish claims would be better described as delusional. It makes kids behave. Does it really? For how long? And is extrinsic motivation the best way to teach our children ethics? So what are you saying? That no one should tell their kids that there's a Santa? No. In the story, Santa represents false hope and tradition. I'm simply saying that nobody should follow tradition without rationally scrutinizing it first. Think for yourself, then make your own decision. But is philosophy all about taking people's hopes away? Not at all. Philosophers are in the business of killing false hopes and replacing them with true wonder. What does that mean? False hope is a surrender, a dead end, a band-aid, a temporary convenience. It's the easy way out. Then what's true wonder? Wonder is a true desire to know. It requires a willingness to question everything, even the things we're sure of. But you can't say that all traditions are bad, right? Of course not. But can anyone think of examples of bad ones? The point is that some traditions are harmful or unnecessary. So the fact that we've always done something isn't reason enough to keep doing it. Again, think for yourself, then make your own decision. Is that where you're going with the reference to the allegory of the cave? Good catch. The shadows on the wall are a nod to the beginning of Book 7 of Plato's Republic. Let's talk about that for a moment. Any other questions or thoughts on Plato? Let's move on. Whew! It looks like Phil and Sophie have survived their encounter with the Bliss villains and narrowly escaped. So that's good. Uh, it's tempting to say that ignorance is bliss, but as the chapter attempts to demonstrate, you're incredibly subject to manipulation by others when you remain ignorant. You need critical thinking to resist other people doing that to you. And of course, being a better thinker helps you grow and form better connections with others, among many other things that I'm sure you all can think of as well. So that's not to say that we should all be Sophie and rain on everybody's parade. There may be a time and a place to share the truth. There may be a way to do it that is true, but also honest and kind. And there may be a time and a place where it just doesn't make any sense at all. For example, if beauty really is in the eye of the beholder, if it's subjective, as many people think, then you know Sophie coming down on somebody uh, for the way they look is just incredibly mean and also not spreading truth because it's a subjective truth. So <laughs> the chapter is not saying everybody should be Sophie necessarily, uh, or everybody should be Phil, or everybody should be Uck. It's never saying any of those things, but uh, 
it is intended to get you thinking. So hopefully it did just that. We start getting into some of the hardcore logic here in the next chapter. So let's get to it.